Hello, everybody. This is Kelly and Jim with the X-Files Preservation Collection. We've got something special for you today. We are sitting with Susanna Hoffman, Larry Moser, Jenny Lynn Hutchison, and Jody Hutchison, all from Chinga. If you all like this format, let us know. And I hope we have a really great conversation. All right. Hello, everybody. How are you? I got to do it. Good. How are yeah. you? Good. Absolutely great. Thank you for asking. So glad everybody could join us today. Yes. Okay. The first question, the first question we definitely. Oh, we wanted to ask Jody mm -hmm. what, how you ended up getting Jenny into acting, how that came to be. Oh. And did you do any acting? I took acting, but I was, I actually trained under a very well-known uh, acting instructor, but I was terrified. I, very shy, very terrified to be the center or, or um, it's a horrible stage fright. Uh, I'm not um, a center of attention kind of person. I'm more creative writing, um, things like that, music, but in the background, I don't, yeah, no. So yeah, I did understand um, acting and um, I come from a family who's in the industry, um, makeup artists and, and lighting and different things. But um, no, I, I never became an actress. I was more sports and different things. Jenny, she was just a natural, outgoing, animated creature as a child she was just so she wanted to be in the tv she wanted to be in where all the ashley and and mary kate's were and all the she just wanted to be so involved and we were actually shopping i think at superstore and she was chatting up a storm and this agent came up to her and said your daughter, I, I've been watching you, and your daughter absolutely needs to be in some kind of commercials, modeling, film, whatever. She just has, she has something. And I'm like, oh. And she's like, here's my card, you know, look into me, look into everything and give me a call. Wow. So I said, okay. So she started off with an agency where she did some modeling for Woodwind, which is like a I, well, I guess in the States, you wouldn't have Woodwards or Woodwind or it, it's kind of like a Woco or do they have that in the States? What would it be compared to Target, maybe Target? So she did some modeling and um, for Oshkosh and different things. And then she did a, a talent show where there was a whole bunch of agents and got picked up by um, Excel Talent in Vancouver. And that's when she started doing film and and commercials um and getting into the union and different things um but she just lit up anytime she was on set and it was she was always the happiest person when she was busy learning and being on set and being allowed to be creative and 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 hone in the craft that she enjoyed so much and when she wasn't working she was very almost not satisfied with anything. She was very, very intelligent in school, um, way above her grade levels in school. And so she'd get bored easy. And when kids get bored and they're intelligent, they get into mischief. And then, they, you know, they, they get cranky. And, you know, so she, unless she was working or doing something um, like advanced math or doing something advanced, then she would be bored silly. So we always had to keep her entertained or busy with something. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so I, were you on set a lot, you know, during the filming of Chinga? Always. Mm -hmm. Always in the background, but there. Um, I, unless I saw something that I knew wasn't right or anything else, I didn't interfere per se. I'm not a stage mom kind of person. I, I sometimes maybe wish I had been in some ways, but I, I really wasn't. Um, Jenny would tell me, Jenny is very honest and would tell me if something was wrong or if she didn't feel comfortable with something or, and I listened to her as how she felt. 
I'm not going to put fears into her and say, oh, are you comfortable with this? Or are you, if, if she's not, she will let me know. And so I kind of went with it. And it was such a family environment. It was such a great environment for her and for me as a parent watching the people that she worked with. It, it, I didn't have any concerns, but yes, I was always there. If I wasn't, my husband was. That's, that's good. That's great. You know, we yeah. hear that a lot. We hear that a lot that, uh, you know, it was kind of a family atmosphere, you know, and so I take it the cast and the crew and everything were very cordial to you. Amazing. Amazing. We, I think we, we only had one problem. I don't know if Susanna remembers this. It was a tutor on set. Do you remember her, Susanna? Exactly. Mm -hmm. She kept harassing Susanna. She wouldn't leave her alone. And she was a past this woman. <laughs> and this was during the Dairy Queen scene, I believe, where she had Jenny behind the counter in a room because you have to do so much homework a day. Mm -hmm. And Jenny had come out and she said, Mom, the lady won't let me go to the bathroom. <laughs> I said, excuse me? She says, she won't let me go to the bathroom. She says, I'm just trying to get out of my mouth. I'm like, you wanting to get out of math? I said, that's, you know, that's insane. So I went to talk to her and she was kind of rude. And so I went and talked to Kim and, and Susanna had always brought up the concern that this woman is a past. And because she just kept, like, she's trying to get into her scene. And, and you know, when you're an actress, you, you're trying to listen and absorb what's going on around you so you can complete your scene. And this woman is just, Deep, 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 the whole time. And when she's wow. supposed to be tutoring Jenny. Yeah. And um, so, she, yeah, we, she, Kim threw her off the set that day, like that second, and said, You're gone. And we had to find another tutor because she needed a tutor. But Kim said, You know what? I will not have someone like that. If Jenny says, You know, yeah. she's really has to go to the bathroom. And she, she almost had an accident. Like she was holding it so long because, and I didn't know. And the, after that, yeah, those are times where I wish I had been a bit of a bossy mom, but I didn't know. And so Jenny told me when she finally escaped the woman and <laughs> kind of said, because it was a long scene, I guess and she was behind <laughs> it. So she couldn't come around, but yeah, that was the only issue. And it was taken care of like, that like they be, like Jenny was believed it, you know Kim looked at her and, and said well I'm going to take her word over yours to the tutor you're out of here and it was because Jen is a you know she she knew and I knew it was definitely not to get out of mouth because the child adored mouth believe it or not <sighs> so yeah that was crazy but that was the only thing everything else was just amazing Awesome. It was probably the best time she had ever on a set other than, yeah, I'd no, I'd say X-Files is probably the best by far. How did you, how did uh, Jen land the role to, uh, to be Polly on Chinga? Do you remember Jen? Super young. Um, I also, yeah, like uh, Larry said, I also had to go um, several times to uh, for callbacks just to be sure that I understood the concept and I was able to play the different emotions. Um, I don't know that there was anything specific. I definitely wasn't uh, at a point where I was being offered a role. Um, I, I don't know. Do you want to? I, I think it was. I think it was through my. Yeah. They were doing a toss up between whether they wanted her to do Emily or whether they wanted her to do Chinga. And the difference between Lauren, who played Emily, and Jenny is Lauren was a little more younger she is looking. Younger. They're, they're about the same age. I think she's about a year younger. Mm -hmm. um, but she had a more innocent, younger face. And Jenny ha had more of a dark personality <laughs> um, because yeah. she wasn't the dolly type of little girl that was like, ooh, look at my dolly kind of thing. Um, she was into Goosebumps and, and into like mm -hmm. all those kind of shows on TV, Friday 13th and like all the, you know, um, Are You Afraid of the Dark and just all those cool kid ghosty shows and love to read the books. And so sh she was more darker. And so it, I think it, that's how Jenny ended up with 
chinga as well as being able to fit in the shopping cart <laughs> which i think was the deciding factor at the end of it you know so, so since your mom mentioned that you were a goonies fan did you know suzanne goosebumps, goosebumps thank you did yeah. you know suzanne I was in an episode I didn't until I watched her interview with you guys. I had no idea. Um, I may have known back then, but it definitely didn't, I didn't remember. But that's really cool, actually. Yeah. And I also fit in the shopping cart. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. That would be funny if at the audition they had a shopping cart. <laughs> right? Yeah. How did they I don't think they did. Her first audition, though, they, they had told me that they the doll had ringlets and we had to do her hair in ringlets. I spent all night putting her hair in, um, what oh, were those two? Were they Velcro rollers? No, they were the ones that you, you tore. Remember I tore up a bunch of sheets and, and did the, <laughs> oh, to, you roll your hair up in sheets and you tie it and you sleep in them. Poor Jenny. She had such a headache the next day and it turns out they didn't want her with curly hair after all. So, <laughs> And she had just gotten all her hair cut off. Her hair was down to her uh, butt and she had gotten it cut for a film she actually did with Lauren DeWald that played Emily, yeah. um, where they had to match and have the same haircut mm -hmm. because it was like a before or different realms, mm -hmm. same kid, different realms or something. So it was, it was kind of neat, but Jen had just gotten her hair all chopped off. So it was just starting to grow. So trying to get ringlets in this shorter hair was a challenge. But I'm, so I'm glad they didn't have to do that. That would have been a long chair time for ringlets. I think actually, you know, when I, when I think of you and it was funny when I saw the picture of your son, mm -hmm. your, it was always your eyes were so haunting. Blue, yes. And just, I think that's that sort of old soul, right? Right into yeah. the eyes and- Not the same ones. <laughs> this kid who just, <gasps> Yeah. and it fits so perfectly to to the role um so yeah. Susanna I, I hi um when you were doing filming Chinga you know and Jenny Lynn Polly you know how was your interaction with her and I mean she was really young you know I mean was it hard or did it just click you know you two acting together I think it just clicked and if anything I just felt protective I think um you know because it was it was pretty intense and there's this little innocent fabulous child but I, as i said before in the interview was i think i think kim really set the tone and uh 100 and, and it, it was just all positive nothing there was no weirdness there was no kind of drama and all that kind of stuff that can happen. It was like, there was just none of that. It was, it was very intense, but actually quite fun. And uh, yeah, no, it was just like, absolutely um, eat like a, a very easy relationship. That's good. That's great. That's great. That's awesome. Larry, um, Yo. Uh, how, you know, how did you get the part, you know, in Chinga, you know, I mean, was it just, you know, they called you up, or, you know, did you have to work for the part? Well, to start with, I thought they were just calling me up, right? Because I'd done three other parts on X-Files. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, the parts were sort of getting larger as they went along. Except, you know, I guess that it's a saw-off between Detective Manners and uh, and that, uh, that paramilitary guy. What the heck was his name? Um, what was his name? Brian... Um, what was his name? Anyway, you know what I mean? It was a, it was the show about the generals that were getting bumped off by the invisible guy. And I was the mentor of the invisible guy. What it was called unrequited was the name of the, uh, mm -hmm. of, of that uh, show. And I've, um, Markham, Denny Markham was the name of the character. So like, you know, I'd done a lot of work for them. So they called me up or my agent said, Hey, they want uh, to see you for this part. So I thought they were just, it was like a formality, right? Yeah. And they didn't even get me to read anything. They just said, uh, oh, yeah, you'd be perfect for this. And I went, okay. And they said, we'll, we'll get back to you. 
and and they were always very nice you know kim and chris carter th those guys are really great guys i mean they're not going to mess you around they they're telling you the straight goods at the time but then the next afternoon my agent called and said uh, they want to see you again and <laughs> I said, oh, sure, I, you know, I'll go and talk to Chris Carter and, uh, and Kim Manners anytime. Those are great guys. And I guess there was this, the one I was talking about, the guy from Fargo, who expressed an interest in the role. Mm -hmm. And so they thought, well, you know, just for us, what, what would you do with this scene? So I did the scene, you know, and uh, they said, okay, great, great. And I left. And then I heard they were considering somebody else. And I, so I started to think, Jesus, you know, what, what, what really are they doing now? Uh. Are they only going to go to me if it's like last resort and they're looking for somebody? But it wasn't. It was people that really wanted to do that part because Stephen King wrote it. Right. X-Files was at the peak of its popularity. And uh, that character was the co-lead uh, of that episode. Yeah. Uh, Mulder wasn't there, right? Right. So it was... Chief Bonsant and Scully, who were mm -hmm. doing the investigation. So there were there was a lot of interest in that role. That's I found out that later, but they they stuck with me, which I thought was pretty darn good. And so, on the last meeting, they said, "Can you do this uh, this Maine accent?" And I said, "Well, I don't know what is it. Is it like a Boston accent?" They went, "No, no, no." And so this coach came in and said, "This is how you would say this sentence." And the, really the only thing I had to think about in that sentence, other than just doing kind of a average American accent was, ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you go, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> they went, okay, yeah, you can. You right? got it. Yeah, that's it. That's what we want. So it, it, it started off seeing like it was a lock and then it wasn't, and then it was. So it was kind of funny, but you know, that was a lead of that uh, episode. So I could, I can see where they were still thinking about it right up to the, uh, the you, you were perfect for the role yeah. you know you were absolutely yeah. perfect. yeah <laughs> thanks that's nice to hear you know you you bring up that that was the co-lead and Susanna when we talked to you well, so, yes part, Susanna was too yeah. yeah it was the first time Three I years. realized that it was like this was the first step of, well the first one I can think of where it was like two different storylines that then came together at the end it yeah. was I mean yeah. That was like you and you and Jenny had your storyline, and Bon Sant and Scully had theirs, and then yeah. I met at the end. It was a yeah. I should have clarified that when I said co-lead. I mean, instead of Mulder and Scully, yeah. it was Bon Sant and Scully. You, I mean, you, yep. your characters were equally as important. I, I hope I didn't nope. in any way <laughs> diminish what you guys did. You were just as important. No, I was just that's. Um, one of the things that makes this episode so interesting that that was yeah. shot so differently, you know what I mean? Like with two different, yeah. cause normally it just follows Mulder and Scully and That's what I mean, yeah. everybody else just kind of, so that was, but it didn't this time. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. No, it delved really well into the story of the mother and daughter and, uh, and the boyfriend who was a cop and uh, worked under me. Oh, and, oh Bill McDonald. Was really yeah. trying to discourage. Right. Yeah. yeah, he's he's a great guy too, and a very good actor. Bill McDonald. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very good actor. So, you could say there were all we were all leads in that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, he Bill McDonald is very professional. Um, again, at the Dairy Queen, there was lots of strange things happening at the Dairy Queen. Um, <laughs> yeah, do you guys remember when the light the, fell? Is that huh? Do you remember when the light fell and hit him in the head? Oh my God! And he got a concussion. Who, yeah. who got hit in the head? Bill McDonald. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. It hit him in the head. It was one of those like fluorescent light, like the covers. The ones, yeah. It came down off the ceiling, whacked him really hard in the head, and one of his pupils was actually smaller than the other. They were really concerned, oh, wow. but he wanted to keep filming. <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. It was. It, it was a, the, the Dairy Queen was quite the. That's strange. Jenny had a laughing jag during one of the Very scenes funny. that she couldn't stop because the camera kept zooming in and it was at the I want more cherries. Yes. And then she didn't know that she had a spit bucket to spit the cherries. So she kept eating maraschino cherries. She to this day cannot eat maraschino I cherries. I can't. 
they uh, gave me a Sunday on my way out. They're like, oh, like you did so great. Here's an extra Sunday. And I walked out and I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> and it was like, sorry, but I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. <laughs> Crazy. Wow, that's yeah. yeah, it is something. Um, did you know? Did you all know that uh, the title episode Chinga was not the original name? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Why was? Do you know why it was changed? No, and well, actually, I have the original script. I have the script written by Stephen King. You guys okay. probably do too, too, don't you? You have that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, we were just wondering why they changed the name. But what was the original name on that script? I got the script. But I don't. I don't remember seeing what the name. Was. It wasn't. I. I believe I don't have the script on hand. Wasn't it called like Bug Honey? Something, Something like that. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was because Chinga is a bad name in Spanish in some places. So they've even even in some places it's called something else. Um, right. Yeah. Chinga is a, a big time swear word there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I found that out. Really, I found that out because my uh, relative, six times removed in LA, that I was living, uh, staying with after it, um, when I was very excited to tell them that the show was coming out, and I said, "And it's called Chinga," and they probably went, "Oh!" Yeah, and she was. She's from was it Venezuela. I can't, anyway, Latin America. And her face just, and, I had no idea. and then she told me what it, what it really meant. So, yeah, I had to tell Jen not to repeat it. <laughs> the, the name in certain company, I, I said, it's, it is a bad word. So you in Spanish. So if you know anybody who speaks Spanish, it might not be a good idea to say, oh, you know, I filmed a show called Chinga and uh yeah they think you were doing porn or something right right <laughs> so it was like mm. so i had to definitely tell her about it and make sure she God. didn't go running around yeah. you know yeah definitely that could be bad right now with with all of you when you know the episode is being, when the episode you know is you guys are sitting around at it you know like the screenwriters and all that stuff you know and they have like, are you in the room when they put like the storyboard cards up at all? No, you guys don't. No? no. Okay. I wasn't. I, I was there that day because they called me back one more time. That was the, t the day to check that I could mm. do the accent. Right. Yeah, they did have them in the third audition. Yeah. I believe there's some storyboards yeah. up, but not during the you know. but Okay. As you all know, Chris Carter mm -hmm. donated a bunch of stuff to us, and yeah. we were flipping through some stuff. We have the original storyboard cards <laughs> from the episode, wow. and Susanna, this is going to be a shocker to you. Uh -oh. You know, we are flipping through these, and towards the back, actually, Susanna, you're the hero. <laughs> you know, you saved Scully. From Chinga. From Chinga. And this in this edition. Yeah. Yeah. Find that one. Find out that that one. Okay. It's and then Jenny, in the storyboard, you take the this Chinga one. doll and you put it in the microwave. And this one. And then the doll shows up in the dump, not at the not yeah. in a trap. Yeah, we oh. found, we find yeah it, the the doll showed up at the dump. That, you know, this is the first one, and then this one, right here. We'll yeah. show this one right here. And, and didn't they hint at more of a relationship that happened between Bob Sam and Scott? Yeah, there's one of them right there. If you can read that, oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. and, then, and the next one, right here, Melissa. I was like, wait, Susanna's the hero in this version, and then the doll finds its way to the dump. Oh God, yeah, and just a little cool. bit different. Yeah, a wee bit, a wee bit, right? That's yeah, crazy found tonight. that very, very interesting. Yeah, I like that in both versions, though, in a way they kind of left it open for a potential, you know, continuation, but they never did it. Oh. Well, a lot of episodes were like that, you know. Yeah. You, you could pick a ton of episodes where you can make like part twos, part threes, and stuff, you know. Yeah. They very rarely tie up all the loose ends. Yeah. Which is good. 
you know, I mean, if if I was a fisherman and I found a doll in a lobster crate, it's going back into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like um, how did it get in that trap? The lobsters have to fight to get in there. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, Jenny. I mean, your opinion. Did you? Uh, did you think, do you believe the doll was, was it the doll that was evil? This is an age old question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that there was um, maybe some under writing that uh, portrayed Polly potentially as having or being on the autism spectrum. Um, so I think that there was um, more to that. And I do think that it was more so that the intention was that the doll had those evil um, possessive qualities. Do you mm. think you knew that the doll was doing those bad things? No, no, I don't think that, um, well, Polly is the character. No, I don't think that she, she knew. Until I think she was more bewitched by the doll. Yeah. 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 I mean, and Susanna, I mean, you, you saw these visions in the episode, you know? So, I mean, what was your take on that? I mean, for your character, I mean, did you think it was the doll or it was Polly? I think I think it was I, I think she thought it was the doll, but I think it's always like you're haunted that there's always a bit of a question. It's not a hundred percent she wants to believe it's the doll, but it could be her kid. Right. <laughs> and in the end you were gonna take them all out. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you know what I had a big problem with there was um uh, when we first shot that scene where where um, uh, Polly has the doll and Suzanne is pounding herself with a hammer, right? <laughs> and and Scully and I come roaring in there, and in the in the script that day, I pull my gun out and I'm ready to shoot, and I always had uh, a lot of problem with that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, sure, I I understand why a cop would have his gun out because his his partner's down on the main floor bleeding out uh, and so he's yeah. got a man he's got a man down, he's got his gun out. That's no question. But I don't think he I, I mean, I just can't see him pointing it at at um a at child. A child or or you know, or anybody. Melissa who's or Thank Melissa, you. why would he point it at Melissa? Maybe, maybe he might want to shoot the doll, but he, what does he know about the doll? So that's sure. what I had with a lot of problem with. And, and fortunately they left that, they left that scene out in the final cut. And in that, in that scene, the way we shot it, Scully actually comes up and knocks my arm down so I don't fire the gun. And then she goes over, gets the doll and puts it in the, uh, the nuker, right? Yep. I, my issue is when you're when you and Scully are, are you know hitting that door, kicking that door, kicking that door. You know, my my question is, why didn't you just break the darn window? Go through the window. It would have been a heck of a lot quicker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would have preferred that because we did a whole bunch of takes of me slamming my shoulder. Yeah, that, that was crazy. Damn thing! And uh, after a while, I went, I don't want to keep doing this. <laughs> You know, and, and Jenny I, and Scully, she's she's asking permission. You know, Polly, give me the doll. Give me the doll. She, yeah. she should just rip it right out of your hand. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you know, the way I read the story, I always thought it was a demonic doll. I, I, I got, you know, like Chucky and all those other yeah. stories. Yeah. There's a demon dwelling inside that doll. That's the way I looked at it. Right. Well, that's kind of how I took it, too. Yeah. Right. I mean, here's a question, you know, I mean, I really, I don't know if anybody's going to have the answer for that, you know, Mulder wasn't in the episode, but, you know, they kind of like filmed them here and there. Why was, why is that? Do you, anybody got any clue why he really wasn't in the episode? Uh, yeah, I, I, I know why he wasn't in it is he wanted to get away early for Christmas and that shot <laughs> right before Christmas. And so they did those wraparound scenes. The first day I was on the set, they did wraparound scenes with uh, with him doing those phone calls, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the episode would have been totally different. Let's just say that Mulder was in the episode. How do you think it would have went? Yeah, I don't even know. I, oh, I, I, I think it's a different story. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think it would have worked that way. 
a different no. story. Definitely because they, not. You know, <laughs> they have this thing going on between Scully and uh, and uh, my character, Bon Saint, at, at, whereas first he's a total annoyance, but then all of a sudden she wants to take him out to dinner. So you think, oh, well, maybe there's something going on now. And whether there was or whether there wasn't, it added another story element, did it? And then there's Mulder trying to uh, get her, uh, you know, her attention saying, oh, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And she just kind of says, oh, go away and hangs up the phone and then becomes more friendly with the, with the police chief, right? We have that lobster dinner and all that thing going lobster on. Lobster dinner, Larry. The way you're eating that lobster. I love this. <laughs> those claws up. That was a lobster that had been sitting around. I didn't dare put it, actually put any of it in my mouth. <laughs> Very careful not to. That, that, they had two or three of those sitting around all day, right? And, and then you got to do dinner scenes. Susanna, you probably know this. They're really hard to do dinner scenes because you do them over and over, every little detail. And there's food sitting there. And you. the toughest thing to do is to make it look like you're eating and not really be eating, right? <laughs> Oh, look at the maraschino cherry situation. Yeah, right? <laughs> I didn't think she was eating them all. Because <laughs> no. I, 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 I was like, you did spit them out, right? After each time. Oh, no. I'm like, oh, no. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to, you know, yeah. take her to the hospital later. She'll be sick as a dog. Luckily, she was okay, but ugh. How long did it, how long did it take? Eating bad lobster. Yeah, oh, bad yeah. lobster. Yeah. Could be, you yeah. could get serious, serious sickness. That lobster was absolutely the biggest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it was a massive creature, yeah. It was an Atlantic lobster. That they, they flew in some of those. That was, on, that was filmed in Steveston, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was right on, uh, right on one of the, in one of those little restaurants. That, Fishing village area, you know, yeah. Right, right on the water, yeah. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to film that episode? Oh, the whole episode? Yeah. Four weeks, five weeks? Three and a half to four. Well, because there was a break at Christmas. That was the... Yeah, huh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they... No, you know, I, can't, I can't remember, but I know I worked almost every day, and it was for a long stretch there. It was a good yeah. gig. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, working on the X-Files would be a great gig. Well, oh, yeah, it was always a pleasure. We think so. You know, always a pleasure working on that show. Always. Yeah, I had nothing but great experiences all three times. So, yeah. Oh, you did yeah, three? I did three. Yeah. Chango was my third. Yeah. Okay. What were the other ones? I did F. Masculata, F. Masculata and uh, Paper uh, Hearts. Yeah. What was it? Paper second? Hearts was oh, hard yeah. for me oh. to be on set for. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. had to be, I, I've never. Like her acting is, was so good as I used to get really emotional watching her. It was like, great. Like I could really feel her, but this time she was laying in a grave, like on top of a grave and I couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. Her makeup was, she looked pale and blue. And as a mom, seeing your child lay there like that, it was just too much to handle i was just i couldn't stand there i had to walk away i i couldn't even it, it was just so heart-wrenching to watch and then i think oh my god can you imagine a, a parent having to, oh i just i went into all kinds of Ugh. crazy mom dark stuff and it was freaking me right out um that was the only time i really had a hard time with with her acting was watching that that was what just about, crazy uh, what about when her mom's smacking herself with a hammer and she's holding the doll that must have, <laughs> must have got you this spot rough yeah, that was pretty intense <laughs> i know that, that was pretty intense, intense that was to watch. Intense scene. yeah but that's how i know that it was the doll because when the doll was taken away you can see in 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 polly's face how she looked at her mom after Mm -hmm. And how much she loved her mom and how much she felt. And if, if she was truly autistic, if she was truly um, as autistic as they made her sound, um, she would not have had that reaction. Or if it was her being evil, she wouldn't have had that remorseful, 
caring um, feeling that she had um, when the doll was taken away, mm-hmm. um, where, where you could just see her whole demeanor change and you could see actual, yeah, like w- she was just so, wow, like I, I, I mom, like waking up. Kind yeah, of. yeah, 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 yeah. So like the next day after filming, at all the radio stations were talking about it and we we're on the way to a field trip um, at, at the Burnaby Museum. And um, the whole debate was who's more evil, the girl or the doll? Mm-hmm. And boy, some of the comments that came up about the girl and, the, and we were like, seriously, Jen's in the back seat in her car seat thing because she's so tiny. She um, had a booster seat and she's like, are they kidding? Like, is this for real? We get to the museum, we walk in, and all of a sudden, oh my God, that's that little girl. That's the little girl. Because it just aired the night before. And, and the huge audience. It too. was a weird vibe in that room. And then she so somebody finally said, Are you are you the little girl from from the X Files last night? And Jen's in a like girl girl school uniform kind of thing and, and like a school uniform, hair tied back in a ponytail. And she's like, Yes. I knew it. I knew it. One of the girls said, and they're like, oh, can we have your autograph? And they're like flipping out. And I'm, I'm like, well, she's kind of late for already for her class. She's got to go. <laughs> and so Jenny's like, um, maybe on the way out. <laughs> like, it was a little intense. But uh, and then some reporter in the newspaper had reported what school she went to and stuff. And that's where my mama got my backup is because oh. I'm like, you have no idea how famous the X Files is, and how many fan clubs and this and that. And you just reported in all of Vancouver which school my daughter goes to. And the reporter says, "Well, if she was in a track meet or something, it would say what school." I said, "That's a little different than than you yeah. reporting that this child goes to this school at this address and this." I said, yeah. "Like, think about it." So I was a little upset by that, but I um, even get the address anyway. They don't usually give that out on the set. Well, they somehow they knew what school she went to. Yeah, well, I guess it wasn't hard. I mean, I mean, she had done sports and stuff, and and had shown up for different things, but it wouldn't have come across the same way. Um, hmm. But but yeah, it was yeah. all over the Vancouver Sun or whatever that um, Jenny Lynn Hutchison, who goes to Marion Re- or. Um, our lady of mercy and blah, 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 blah is in this episode. And blah, you know, I was like, uh, <laughs> I mean, this wasn't a show around that was as popular as the X-Files. So I, I get like the interest, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah I was a little scared. I was a little yeah. scared by that. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think any of us want our address handed out uh, from the production office uh, to anybody, <laughs> unless it's with, proper authorization but uh, further to that point where you said how popular the show was you know when that when that show aired the olympics were on the winter olympics that's right that was the only show that outdrew the winter olympics it got a higher audience yeah. than the winter olympics during that whatever it was two week wow. period where the olympics were on mm-hmm. pretty interesting eh? i mean they built it up like stephen king wrote this one and the show is already po- popular and then it had a massive, uh, massive tune. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's actually yeah. something I said uh, to my now husband when I showed him the episode. I said, you know, it was so popular, but this particular episode, and it's yeah. actually very neat to now share that with him. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. that must be nice, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jenny, uh, Jenny um, how was it f- for you while you were on set, you know? Um, you, did you had time to wind down, to play, to interact with people behind the set? Oh, absolutely. Like I couldn't have asked for a better place to, in a way, grow up. Like I think the only difference between me and say Susanna or Larry or anyone else on set was that I had to do three hours of schoolwork a day. Um, But I got just as much interaction and um, being behind the the scenes sitting with Kim. I, I mean, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Couldn't have asked for anyone better. Yeah. Yeah. So I've always heard great things about Kim. I wish I had had a chance to meet him. 
Do Great. any of you have any fun stories you want to share? Any Kim Maynard stories you want to share with us? Well, Detective Manners, who I played in uh, Jose Chung, is based on him. <laughs> it, that's Kim Manners. <laughs> What's the inspiration for for that character? Although I didn't know that, and they didn't want me to know that. They just wanted me to be this crazy uh, detective. So it's probably a good thing I didn't know at the time. It was afterwards that he said, you know, I was the Kim Manners that you were doing. <laughs> I was, he told I Jenny was, lots of little stories too, um, from when he did some child acting. He didn't do a lot, but he did some. Like on, I think he was on Leave It to Beaver. Oh, was he? And a couple others, just like not not written like his name is credit or anything, but as so and so's friend or something. Or oh, yeah. um, he he did a few things as a kid, um, but he was telling Jen about it and. Um, he told her all kinds like he he just they got along so well and I remember the day Chris Farley passed away who was a really good friend of Kim Manners and he was so upset and Jenny went up to him and gave him a big hug and and he, and he said you know I really needed that thank you like they were just so close and mm -hmm. you know it, it the rapport was just like I said I never had to worry even though I was there I never had to worry about either any of the actors or any of the um directors produce anybody like it it was just like family they were just amazing yeah, that people. was true that's very true yeah. yeah i love hearing that you got that the set was everybody on set was so close that you know if you want to do it's nice to know you guys that really all yeah like got along because you sometimes you hear from other tv shows that like it wasn't like that behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I love yeah. hearing that. That's good stuff. No, it was a rare one for that. I'll tell you, some sets I've been on, there's been somebody who's either snarky or yeah. thinks too highly of themselves or tries to push their way forward in an annoying fashion or somebody on the crew who's unpleasant. Never one incident in the four times I was on X-Files, ever anything like that. And no. Uh, in fact, far from it, just the opposite. People kind of going out of their way to to uh, accommodate you and help you. And, uh, and uh, Yeah, and that's any step from the all the way from ADs up to yeah, like lead yeah, actors. Exactly. Everybody. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. That's great to hear. Yeah. yeah. Rare. Very rare. Awesome. Okay, here's a question for you all. Um, are you all fans of the show? Yes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Totally. totally. I was a fan before I ever got on it. I, the first yeah. episode I saw, and, and knowing it was shot in Vancouver, I watched it and went, "Oh, it's so great to have a show like that coming out of here." I mean, that's that's marvelous. I want to get on say, that. Show. Yeah. How do you grow up in Vancouver and not love the Exiles? Yeah. I, I and Millennium I and scary like things. So it would, yeah. I'll yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true, Suzanne. Yeah. All right. Is it what's what's your favorite monster of the week, or <laughs> you know? Uh, wow. Whether it's the ongoing uh, alien abduction uh, thing yep. or or the monster of the week. Yep. She's. I don't know. I I liked almost every every episode. I ever watched for some reason I would find something to uh, yeah. to get entertainment out of. I like the creepy dark ones. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I... That's probably monster of the week in yeah. my book. Yeah. You know. Yeah. More so that than the paranormal. I really do prefer the darker stuff. So all right, Jenny, what's your favorite episode? I really like home. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely a that's darker not, episode. Yeah, that's not shocking. Gee, yeah. that's a, you know, a lot of people say that. You'd be surprised. Yeah, that's, that's got great. a lot. Of... Yeah, I like as dark as it was. There was such a odd, comical aspect to it with the Andy Taylor small town. Nobody yeah. locks their doors. That whole and the old school music and everything that added such a amazing. Just, just it was such a well done episode that it it was hard to watch it as a show rather than watching 
almost like behind the scenes yet you're not right it, it was such a good episode yeah yeah but dark yeah it was twisted really twisted but it was it was good you I'll gotta have you, a- i really <laughs> like things uh, and a good friend of mine uh, uh robert wisden was in it was the uh the one called Pusher, where the guy yep. could control mm. the other people's brains, right? Because he had this weird cancer. Yeah. I thought that was a fantastic episode, and I, I really uh, enjoyed uh, Robert's work in it. And uh, that goes down as one of my most compelling watches of, of X Files for sure. It's brilliant. What about you, Susanna? Yeah, my my, my memory is not as good. <laughs> and stuff. But I think I think I always liked ones that were more psychological th- thriller than being scary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jump out yeah. The creeping psychological horror. Those, mm-hmm. those are good ones. That one, Tombs, was interesting. Is that the one where the guy was going through the vents? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was kind of creepy. Pretty good. Yes. Yeah. He. he uh, he, um, the 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 actor that played Tombs, he was at the very first X Fest, you know, mm-hmm. and he did a screening and a, you know a panel. Yeah. When you watch the episode Tombs, he you, told us this, he, and now we can't watch it without saying. Every that. time he's he when he mentioned it, every time we see the episode, it's it's right there. When you watch the episode and you see him going down the chimney, you know, I'm sure you've all yeah. seen it. Part yeah. there, the, the props department stuck a pillow in his butt and he's like why did they make my butt so big yeah so you know <laughs> but you can see the pillow like as he's going down yeah. so now every time i you would never notice it but then once he told us you know we're like now you see it <laughs> every time every time you just oh, see the true. square pillow on his butt you hey, know hey, what was the one with the guy it was this was really creepy this one the guy who would uh sneak in on the women and cut their hair before he killed them what was that one that was a really really creepy like he came up behind somebody who's having a bath right and and with his scissors and cut her hair off he he had that he had this real creepy fetish yeah you know he it's the episode where i the title escapes me he kind of abducted scully you know yeah. and he was going to yeah. do the same to her he's going to cut her hair and uh, do her in no, yeah. yeah See, there were some episodes i didn't let jen watch so that one was that uh, one would have been a good one to miss as that a would have been girl. one probably she didn't get to watch oh, oh god that was oh. yeah that one was a that was a yeah. chiller that one that was <laughs> the one i think is the creepiest is too shy with the guy that like wants to suck the people's fat but he needs oh, to yeah. fat i remember oh, that oh, <laughs> <laughs> like oh <laughs> oh and if there's a pot porta potty anywhere i yeah. won't i won't go in it because i'm always scared there's gonna be one of those sucker fish monsters in there uh-huh. from the x files yeah, yeah. luke man like, that was very good ugh. that was creepy that's funny <laughs> so i know jenny liked all the scary props did, did anybody else go and look at the props department because, you know, I, I would love to go into the props department. Yeah. Oh, well, Jenny loves props. props. I used to go and see everything. By the time I had done a few episodes, I made sure the next time I was on set, I would check whatever else out I could. Now, a lot of that work, as you know, is done by the time I get there. Right. By the time I'm on the set, the props have already been delivered. And, you know the prop room is back at in those days at North Shore Studio. So the next time I would be mm-hmm. at North Shore Studio shooting, I would go in and and talk to those folks and and look at all the stuff. And yeah, you know, I came in to see your display in Chicago. That was that yeah. was outstanding. I had a good time there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And we talked to I can't remember saying about one of the special effects guys, and he's like, Yeah. There's things I would never like when you're watching that. The plastic surgery episode and he was like Sang- were, sanguinarium they were under the t- while yeah. they're filming he had to be under the table like smoking a cigarette because they need to make smoke yeah because they took the laser and they burned the lasers through the patient's cheek you know oh, and yeah. Maynard said more smoke more smoke so <laughs> they're smoking right. cigarettes pumping smoke through you know and he's like more smoke so they got multiple cigarettes you know that's the kind of <laughs> how they made tobacco by the way those were like that uh 
Yeah, yeah, the herbal stuff. Yeah, the herbal stuff. If you got enough of that in the room at one time, it was still horrible. I just love finding out how they did all that stuff, like how they made all this stuff happen. Jenny loved the blood and guts. Jenny was all about the blood and guts. She got the special effects guys um, who are working on Chinga and stuff, show her how to make the blood. He had his own special recipe um, and he showed her how to do all that and then how they um, rig everything up. And she was just all over it. She was just thought it was the greatest thing. And like when she went to North Shore Studios to do stuff, um, she'd go talk to them all there, the, the makeup special effects and the prop people and just everybody she just loved it she'd always go like if she went for an audition at North Shore she'd pop into the X-Files office and you know talk to everybody there and she'd write letters to Kim Manners and deliver them there because when he went to LA she was very sad (laughs) and uh yeah (laughs) <laughs> wow, it wasn't too long after Tinga that they did leave. Uh, no, one more next season, season I think. One more season, and then they. Uh, <coughs> left, right? uh, I left. Yeah. So you so, guys were telling us how many different versions of Chinga there were. There was. Yeah, uh, anywhere I how think. How different versions? Eight. Yeah. I know there was two battery packs for sure. Yeah. There was burn Chinga. Yeah. There was. This chinga. There You've was got a one behind you, don't you? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got. Uh, yeah, that's cool that you've got that. That's great. Well, it's Jenny's. But... I know, but it's. I think it's great that you guys have it. That's it's a I great gift. It. It was such a great gift. That's that was fantastic. her Christmas gift from Kim Manners and and. Nice. Oh. Hey, uh, Betty. Betty just went by. She might like to say hi to. Oh, hey, Betty. Yeah. Hey, come on in and say hi, Betty. <laughs> There's Betty. Sweaty. Oh, Betty, hi. <laughs> Betty's been gardening. Betty. And, uh... Hi. 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 <laughs> oh, wow. Long time no see. I know. I know. Susanna, oh. doing okay? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so. Anyway, we're having a good time re- reminiscing. Well, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, good to see you all. Yeah. Good yeah. to see you. Betty yeah. still teaches young actors at uh, Langara College in uh, Vancouver. Oh, huh? fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. She's one of Jen's favorite casting directors. Is that right? Oh, you're, yeah. not just saying that. you're not just saying that because she's here. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, her, Heike. Um, who else? Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Well, you've changed so much. <laughs> I've grown a little bit. Yeah, I'm a little older. <laughs> grown a little bit. Well, I, she was eight the last time I, I saw know, her. I know. I know. And now she's got a little guy that looks just like her. I know. I do. Yeah. He really does, you yeah, know. He, 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 he does. Right down to the glare, I'm telling you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's got, She's. it's called Payback. There you go. <laughs> he, he, he's just as smart, just as smart, and has just as much energy. And he's a, he's just the most fire. wonderful little guy. He's fire. a firecracker. I follow your stuff on Facebook and Instagram a bit, and you've always got some pretty uh, cute shots there. Of the, yeah, he's uh, pretty sweet. Of the pair of you, uh, it's amazing this the resemblance. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the same blue eyes, Susanna. Like just yeah. those yeah. eyes, eh? I was shocked when i saw the picture yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. it's so crazy does anybody know who did chinga's voice does anybody know who did that oh. i don't even know who played the big chinga i don't know yeah, right right yeah do, I don't do you guys know i don't susanna know. or oh I, no. Larry? No, I don't i don't we never did see who who played the big oh, chinga i did she was a petite redhead actually Oddly in the big um, doll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Petite redhead. And I don't, I don't think I ever got her name. But yeah. I don't, she wasn't there very, obviously she wasn't there very often, but um, it was towards like the end of filming that we saw her. Interesting. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. I always wondered about that and, and the voice, but mm. I can't find the answer. I'll keep looking, don't you worry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, no, it's got to be in your stuff somewhere. It's got to be written down because if she had a voice, she had a credit somewhere. Yeah, exactly. And there's so much. So when you talk about paperwork, 
There's so much paperwork from Chris Carter. Oh, I bet. It's just time and reading. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the abundance amount of paperwork, you know. And one thing about Chris Carter, I got to tell you, that is probably the most organized man I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The, 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 the way he cataloged everything. Um, the way he stored everything, you know, I, it was like this giant time capsule. You opened it up and it was just perfection. I couldn't believe it. You know, I think that shows how much he cared about the show. Yeah. His yeah. dedication to it for sure. And I've been following along as you guys have been unpacking and receiving everything and I'm blown away. Mm-hmm. For sure. We are yeah. too. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, Every yeah. Day we're... exactly. You know, we are blown away and we are totally honored, you know, that he did that, you know, and we are totally honored and we are very grateful that all of you decided to participate in this, you know, to us personally, this means a lot and Absolutely. it means a lot to all the fans out there, you know, um, this show is very loved and it will always continue to be loved. You know, and we're going to continue to pass it down, you know, to our kids, you know, after we're long gone, you know, we're not going to let it rest, you know, and we're going to let it grow and get bigger, you know. Yeah, I hope hope that sometime we get a chance to come out there and 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 see the museum. We've never been to an expo or anything or um, we've never um, seen any. Um, of the ex like since filming have you Jen have you been to any no yeah Mm -mm. yeah we are we are probably we are burning the candle at both ends we're working hard to bring it to right you know we're doing like five things at once and then we've got you know our regular nine to five jobs you know and, but it'll happen. But it's it's, it's happening. happening. Yeah. And uh, you're you're, uh, you're you're in LA, right? You're no, no we're in up, we're in upstate New York where there's a lot of trees. Oh, you're in New York. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always had the. I figured you must have been in LA to have Chris Carter be dropping stuff yeah. off all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. It would be a lot easier if we were in LA, probably. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it would. Other side of the country. Yeah. You know, in, in Chicago, I noticed how many young people were at that convention. Yes. Yeah. So this uh, series is very much living on. It's And it's got uh, pretty dedicated followers, I found out. I was quite... Yeah. Quite away it, that it's uh, the followers are, are, are... It's amazing, you know. Fandom we, is... The fandom. It's... We were not... We, we went to Orlando... And uh, at a convention, and uh, they the promoters made the mistake of putting yeah. uh, Duchovny and Anderson next to each other at a signing. Oh, you know? no. that was wrong. Yeah. They weren't. And, yeah, they weren't prepared for the fandom. And I'm just gonna, we were yeah. in line for hours and hours, yep. and we prepaid for ever. Like we already had tickets, and just to get in was like hours, and then wow, you know, hours for. You know, hours for everything. It was, yeah, they should have had them on different days. Almost those two. I mean, wow. yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. You know, the fandom is is strong, and the young people that we see, yeah, it, it surprises me. You know, it really does. You know, and I, just like the other day, somebody was posting in one of the groups. I'm watching for the first time. You know, do I watch the movie or go to season six? You know, I'm like <laughs> start with the pilot episode number one. We tell people, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. go one one and go from there. Yeah. yeah, and my daughter, my daughter, she she just turned sixteen now. So you know, um, she grew up with the X Files because of dad, and it, the show is okay to her, but. Every time she, it's Chinga. She does her favorite. That is her absolute favorite. You know, oh, is it? It's her absolute favorite episode. Oh. You know, and cool. uh, which is weird because she's kind of a little bit of a scaredy, you know, a scaredy yeah. girl. You know, she doesn't like scary things, but she loves Chinga. Yeah, you know, we told her we're having this, you know, this interview and everything. Her eyes lit up. I said, "Well, you can come in and say hi." No, yeah. she's too embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> she's too embarrassed she's shy well, she's shy I'll say hi back to her please and tell her not to yeah. be afraid 
Absolutely. Absolutely. She'll be thrilled. Yeah. Are you guys millennial fans as well? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm, I am more than, you know, Cal, Cal yeah. really hasn't seen much yeah, of it. I haven't seen a lot of millennials. You know, Jim's the one that introduced me to the X-Files actually. So, you know, it was a little later. Yeah. I came in a little later in life. Yeah. What here. was the episode you did, Jen? What's that? Uh, oh, from Millennium? Yeah. Uh, borrow, borrow Time? Borrow Time. Yeah. That was the name of it. Mm-hmm. That was an interesting episode. Yeah. Was, was, uh, did you, was Lance in that episode? Oh, gosh. Eric Mabius there. played the angel of death in that episode. Yeah. Um, they were on a train. And the train's going to crash, I guess. So Eric Mabius is walking through and makes a connection with Jen. Um, it, it was just an intro. I can't remember the whole episode, to tell you the truth. But it was, it was a really interesting one. Yeah, it, um, yeah it's, it's been a while. We have to rewatch it. I keep it. telling them we got to sit down and watch mm-hmm. that. The whole, se- you know, the whole show. Right. And I think the last show... The last show you did was Seven Days, correct? TV show? Or movie? Yeah. Yeah, TV show. Last movie was Papa's Angels. Seven Days was the last yep. TV show you filmed, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. How old were you then, Jen, when you finally uh, stepped when I, away? When I stepped away, I was 12. Yeah? Yeah. 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 I was getting ready to go into high school, and I was just... It was a different time. And uh, I think yeah. I needed to focus on relationships outside as well. And I think, um, you know, there was a lot of pressure to just be in school. I spent a lot of time away from school um, on set. I really kind of grew up on set around a lot of adults and I didn't really necessarily. Um, I don't know. I'm Social gonna- skills. <laughs> yeah, uh, with with my uh, peers, I guess. So I guess going into high school, I was just kind of looking for some um, some structured in class learning. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Plus, you wanted more academics. You you were really into your yeah. academic. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. hard to do that on set. Mm, yeah. It is and so is everybody like kind of like uh, say like retired from acting or are they still acting? <clears throat> acting ish i took a break for a while because I, I had to um just circumstances but then uh about five years ago I decided to jump back in in a different way so yeah awesome and larry where have you been up to i've been doing mostly plays uh, live live theater um <laughs> which of course got absolutely demolished by COVID, uh, live theater really got, you know, mm-hmm. I, I was ready to open a play uh, April 2nd when COVID shut everything down March 14th. Yep. That was a big downer because we'd put a lot of work into that. It was ready yeah. to go. We may still mount it sometime. And then there was a second one that what was going to be remounted was ready to go to. And these are gone. But uh you know, I do a little bit of this and that still. So like Susanna-ish, I'm still in it-ish, right? You're never, I don't think you're ever really out of it if you've done it for as long as, as we have. Uh, there's always some part of you that's going to be connected. And and I've got a ring light now, and I could do some online auditions when I get myself organized. You got a ring light, Susanna? Uh, for, for online auditions? auditions? Yeah. Okay, there we go. There you go. That's so, way different than the letter writing, right, Susanna? Yeah. <laughs> when you were going to write Stephen King a letter, remember? I think I like the letter writing better. <laughs> I yeah. bet. Great. Yeah. Great. What about you, Jen? Uh, that's a tough one. I never say that I'm done. Um, I would like to find my way back. Um, For me, it would be starting over. Unfortunately, my agent passed away. Um, So I would be, in a sense, starting over. But, uh, and obviously, I'm not living in Vancouver. Plus, being in Edmonton, it's different. Yeah, Yeah. I'm not living in Vancouver anymore. So it's a very different um, scene here. But um, perhaps when my son's a little older, he still requires a lot of mommy time. So, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, never say never, Jen. Exactly. You just don't know what's going to come around the corner, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely be watching to see okay. any of you pop up anywhere. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you guys all so much yes. for joining us. This has well, been thank awesome. you. So nice my, to see everyone. My pleasure oh, to everybody. see all of you. That was amazing great. seeing everybody. Yeah. Except for the fact that Jen is supposed to be eight. Yeah. Yeah, I know she grew up. Yeah. <laughs> so sad. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm thank glad she grew up. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. miss the little Jen. You, and I love the big Jen. Very pretty. She's a very pretty young lady now. So uh, I, I don't think uh, she's suffered uh, the, the aging whatsoever. No, she's got a good head on her shoulders. She always yeah. has. And she's always going to do well in whatever she does. She's just an amazing girl. Aww. Aww. Well, let's go with that then. Yeah. All, right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. All hey, right. Thanks, we'll see uh, you guys. Kelly, you, guys uh, you guys take care, hey? You, you too. too. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Bye.